What is it about situationships? What is it about it? It's just basically a glorified toxic relationship. That's what it is. Yeah, it's I. It's a new terminology that didn't exist ten oh. years ago, and now it's just everyone's in a situationship before yeah. it, they turn it into anything. It's just I think there's a fear of labeling something. In my mind, getting to know someone and exclusively getting to know them is dating them. Yeah. Uh, but now that's considered a situationship, even if you're exclusive. And if you're not exclusive, that's also considered a situation. Yeah. It's just a mess. Okay. So let's talk about this sticky topic of situationships. Are they good? Are they bad? Why are they such an intrinsic part of the modern dating experience in today's world and dating landscape? And what can you do if you're in one and you don't want to be in one any longer? So first and foremost, a situationship is basically a romantic or sexual relationship that lacks clearly defined labels or commitments of any kind. And it's generally more than just a casual hookup, but it's not a fully committed relationship. And of course, there can be variance in terms of the degree of involvement, emotionally, romantically, sexually, as well as the degree of expectations. But situationships are definitely becoming a huge part of the modern dating landscape. And I mean, it makes sense because there's social media, there are dating apps, there is like literally more convenience at everybody's fingertips, which makes it harder for people as a general rule to invest. But I wouldn't say that all situationships are toxic. I also wouldn't say that all situationships are great either. So I want to go through here and just talk about some key points that you can consider if you're in a situationship on both the positive and not so positive side, as well as some action steps. We'll go through three steps that you can take if you're in a situationship with somebody and you want to move the needle towards something more serious or more committed to really get to the bottom of things and stop being in that gray area forever. So first and foremost, there can be flexibility and freedom. Like on the positive side, flexibility and freedom in a situationship can be a good thing, particularly if you are not sure what you're looking for or you've just come out of a challenging situation and you need some time to get back on your feet. Um, and if you're in a position where you're trying to learn about yourself through the dating experience and really decide what it is that you're really looking for. Another positive that can come out of situationships is there can be reduced pressure. You know, I definitely have seen when I was in my client practice, people get into these more casual relationship dynamics because they, you know, have feelings for somebody, they're interested in somebody, but they're not ready to make a commitment because they just came out of like a 20 year divorce, you know, not 20 year divorce, but 20 year marriage that just ended in a divorce. And they're trying to figure out like, who am I at this stage of life? Okay. So there can be that kind of dynamic for some people. It's, they just got out of university or college and they're trying to see what it is that they're going to do next. And they're not sure where they're going to live long-term because they have all these job opportunities in different parts of the world and not sure if they can do long distance. And we can see that there can be some degree of mutual enjoyment if both parties are on the same page. So not all bad, okay? There can be some good things. Where it goes really south is number one, if one person is pretending that they want a situation ship and they're okay with something casual as a strategy to people please and not lose the other person. Because right away, you have this lack of transparent conversation communication and you have totally different needs and expectations where there's no middle ground. There's no overlap. One person literally wants something casual. The other person wants something else and is pretending and it's going to blow up like a volcano eventually. Another big point that can happen is if situationships are like this stepping stone, like, yeah, we're like moving towards a commitment. And one person says that, but the other person's unavailable for a commitment because they have their own things they have to work through or work on. And if they're not saying that clearly, they're, they're like kind of leaving, you know, they're leaving somebody on to think like, yeah, I'll be ready for that one day when deep down internally, they know that they're not now. And they know that they're not taking any actions to make themselves more ready. Okay. So for example, if you're in a relationship dynamic and you hear somebody saying to you, yeah, I'm looking for a commitment eventually, but just not right now. I have my own trauma or I have to be in a certain financial position or these things that you'll often hear thrown around. Well, 
if you're on the vetting side of that, if you're on the side of that where you're waiting to see like, and you're hoping to progress the relationship, if you don't see that person taking action to actually work on their trauma, like going to counseling or doing some self-work or reading books or whatever it might be, then that person's not going to change how they're feeling, you know, because enough time has passed. That's a highly unlikely scenario. And that's really important to take into consideration. So we have these downsides, which can be that there's ambiguity, like a lot of confusion and just too much openness. There can be a total difference of needs and expectations. It can cause a lot of emotional insecurity for, for somebody, especially if they are looking for progress in the relationship eventually, or at least assuming that that will take shape. And it can cause individuals to really opt for convenience. And this is honestly the the biggest downside of a situationship from my perspective, which is that you'll often think that because there's the convenience of so many other options, you won't have the staying power to do the necessary work to form a healthy relationship. What does that even mean? It means that we move through stages of connection. We start in the dating stage. And if we decide that we really really like somebody, we can then move into the honeymoon stage. And then eventually we hit the power struggle stage. And if we move through that, we move into the stability commitment and then bliss stage, which is like the honeymoon stage, but you know somebody so much better. And if we don't work through things, like you're going to find things that are imperfect about every person, okay? You're going to find situations where there's something they do that you don't like and vice versa. But that's a call for for conversation and communication. That's not a call for just exiting immediately. In fact, it is such an important skill, not just for relationships romantically, but for relationships in all facets of life friendships, family relationships, workplace relationships, huge business relationships, to be able to actually hash things out and work things through. And if we don't learn to acquire that skill of being vulnerable, of saying what's on our mind or what affected us or didn't go well and actually talking that out with somebody else, then you're going to find yourself constantly restarting your life in the relationship department, pushing business partnerships away, colleagues away, leaving workplaces because you have an unresolved conflict that you're stewing about and eventually hits this like critical tipping point, leaving friendships, family, romantic relationships. That's not dealing with an issue, dealing with an issue and actually working through it and coming to healthy conversation strengthens the relationship instead of weakens it and actually creates more positive outcomes if we learn to do that properly. And it's a skill that takes practice and understanding of self and communication. So I said I would stick around. If you stuck till the end, I would tell you the three things that you can do differently if you want to get out of a situation, Shep, and really get to the bottom of like where this relationship belongs and what should happen next. I'm going to tell you those three things, but I do want to let you know if you want to do a deeper dive into healthy communication and learning to hash out challenges, I will put a link to a course fully for free just for a limited time, all about conflict communication, how to do it right. Um, And it has steps and strategies. It even has some scripts in there for how to communicate in the best way possible that is straight to the point, learns to get your needs met, uses a framework to make both people feel resolved in an an argument or a difficult discussion. And again, fully for free down below just for a limited time. Now, three things you can do if you're like, I am done with being in a situation ship or I'm finding myself in this position. Well, number one is you want to understand that if you are the person who wants to move the needle on a relationship, it's actually unattractive to people, please. And I say this with like the most love and respect to anybody who people pleased or people pleases. I have a history of being like that. I had to do a lot of work on that during my journey of becoming securely attached 10 years ago and learn to like be able to advocate for myself and speak up for myself and be consistent about those things. Now, here's why it's unattractive. It's actually unattractive to the subconscious mind. Okay. Your conscious mind is responsible for three to 5% of your beliefs, thoughts, emotions, and actions. Your subconscious mind is responsible for 95 to 97% of those things. So here's what happens. If you get into a position where you, you think, oh yeah, like people pleasing consciously, that makes sense where that's an attractive thing. No, the subconscious mind is running the show and the subconscious is wired for something called trait variety. I really wants to see that somebody else has different traits than you. This is basically a biological thing and a survival thing from, you know, years and years and years ago. If you're out trying to survive in the world and you're somebody who's really smart and you pair up with somebody who's really strong, you have a better chance of surviving together. So we're actually wired to be attracted to people who express different traits than we do. 
Meaning that if you go on dates and you're getting to know somebody and you people please, and you're so agreeable all the time, it's actually not going to be biologically and subconsciously as attractive to somebody else as if you actually advocate for your own opinions, your needs, and your boundaries. Now, there's a difference between like being overly rigid and constantly confrontational and aggressive, but there's that healthy middle ground, which is you being your own person, you sharing your truth, doing that in a kind and respectful way, and talking about your needs and allowing yourself to take up space. And that is a huge first thing to understand. If you are interested in helping make a huge impact on other people's lives while also building financial freedom, I'm offering an early bird 50% discount on our integrated attachment theory relationship certification program that will help you become a certified integrated attachment theory relationship coach and build your own thriving practice by the end of 12 weeks. This 12-week on-demand program will help you kickstart your new career by teaching you revolutionary tools and strategies that help clients transform their lives and relationships, build your own coaching practice, and set yourself up for a wait list of clients and financial success. Even if you have no coaching experience, this program will give you very in-depth tools, resources, and confidence to get started in a matter of weeks. And you can learn more information by clicking the link down below. Number two, have a conversation. You have to have the discussion. And sometimes people will be so afraid of pushing somebody away in a situation where they're going to opt to like not have a discussion at all. And that's basically always going to be the worst outcome because you'll people please for long enough and avoid the conversation until the, the relationship fades away or that person pulls away more and you'll feel more anxious and more hurt and upset. And you'll see yourself act out in different ways or become critical. Um, and that will end up in a situation where you'll accidentally push the person away or that person will just divest from the relationship dynamic and it'll just be this dragged out scenario. Instead, if you advocate for your needs, you can say something like this. Hey, I'm enjoying spending time with you. I definitely see that we could have a future together. It doesn't mean that we have to make this commitment this very second, but I value my own time and I care about, you know, and respect my own boundaries in a relationship dynamic. And I know that I will eventually be looking for something more, probably sooner rather than later. And I need to know that we're moving in that same direction together for me to keep showing up in the same way. You can shorten that if you want. If you want to put it in a text, you could take like half of that and put it in there. Um, but you want to have that conversation. It's not an ultimatum. It's not like putting somebody under pressure or on the spot, but it's you allowing yourself to take up space. And that's going to be a very important discussion to have. Number three, make sure that you communicate your needs regularly and in the positive. Okay. If we don't positively frame our needs, they're not going to get heard and they're probably then not going to get met. What do I mean by this? Positively framing your needs means the difference between saying, you don't care about me. You never spend enough time with me versus, hey, I'm feeling disconnected. I want to spend more time together. Let's plan something fun for Saturday evening. On one side of things there, you're actually moving the needle and creating progress. On the other side of things, you're just coming across as critical and you're not getting heard and you're not getting your needs met and it creates conflict in the relationship. And it's not fair to you because behind every criticism is actually just an unmet need that somebody's attempting to convey. But until you do that work, you're going to feel stuck and frustrated. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for watching. If you want to check out that communication course so you can resolve conflict and become a really healthy, productive communicator, and really keep moving the needle in your relationships. That link is free down below for a limited time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.